Okay. Yes. We're moving on with the executive officer report for 101 presentation. Yes. Uh, my name is Blair Knox. I'm the executive officer of Kern LAFCO. I've been asked to provide an introduction to the Kern Local Agency Formation Commission this evening. We're recording this presentation for a dual purpose. This is an educational opportunity for commissioners, and this recording will also be available on our website that hopefully will be up soon. Some of the items that I go into detail about are items that I would assume commissioners may already know, uh, but, I, but I cover these here tonight so that residents of Kern without prior knowledge of LAFCO would be able to understand the basics. Does this work? Yeah, I got a worksheet. Oh, nice. So what, what's ahead? Let me start with the questions we're trying to answer. What is the history behind how LAFCOs were created? What is the commission's task with accomplishing? How did current LAFCO get more commissioners than anyone else? What is LAFCO's non-planning planning function? Who says LAFCO can do that? And there's a law that says they can. And now that I'm a commissioner, what did I get myself into? We'll start with the creation. And of course, God created the heavens and earth, but LAFCO had to wait till the 1960s before man created LAFCO. Uh, before the LAFCO enlightenment, there, there was a dark void where decisions were made by county supervisors and occasionally the state legislature. It was an imperfect system that was exposed when California's population boom following, following World War II. As cities and special districts were scrambling to add much to their boundaries as, pos as possible, politicians were put in the middle, having to make the decision between two or more agencies wanting more and more um, Politicians found themselves in a precarious position. Whatever decision they made was likely to set half or more of their constitu constituents, hard to say. That's a really good way of not getting reelected if you're a politician. So they did what any self-serving politician would do. They punted the responsibility to someone else. So voila, LAFCOs were created to bail out the politicians. While the politicians didn't want direct responsibility, they sure didn't want Sacramento to tell the locals where growth was supposed to go. So the solution was to create LAFCOs in each county. And in the long held tradition of Sacramento, they provided no direct funding. More on that funding piece later. Even without funding, Sacramento decided what LAFCO should focus on. LAFCO's purpose, uh, this slide is one of my favorite uh, in the entire presentation because I use it as a scorecard. Going down the list, please ask yourself pri privately, how good has LAFCO been at meeting these purposes? One, have orderly boundaries been encouraged? Two, have urban sprawl been discouraged? Three, how much agriculture and open space has been pr preserved? Four, has LAFCO created a structure of agencies that are efficient at providing public services? Five, what role has LAFCO played in supporting regional housing and adequate water supply? While I have my personal scoreboard, I hope each of you gives these questions more thought as we go through this presentation. As mentioned before, there's no state involvement, direct state, state involvement as mentioned previously. No ministry of appeal means that any challenge has to go through court and run the gauntlet of the legal system. This is what, hap what happened recently when Kern LAFCO was sued over a CEQA issue. Not mentioned in this slide is that someone who is unhappy can then go to the state legislature and pass a bill. Except for rare circumstances, it's difficult to pass a bill that's retroactive, meaning that the, your stance is going to pro likely uh, continue to stand. Uh, these types of bills often appear in our legislative reviews that I give you every, t every once in a while during the year. And this happens when there's an impasse between agencies. When the politicians punted, they asked the state leg legislature to create a new structure. This was originally compass, uh, accomplished by the passing of the Knox-Nesbitt Act in 1963. Different pieces were added over time to both strengthen LAFCO's authority, allow special districts to serve on LAFCO and clean up the code section affecting cities, special districts, 
and Lafko culminating with the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Local Government Reorganization Act of 2000 that consolidates nearly all of Lafco's authority in one place in the government code, changed the funding formula, and added additional authorities and responsibilities. This is the current structure in the government code and what you might hear staff referring to as CKH, Cortese Knox Hertzberg. One principle that's been consistent from the beginning was the ability and flexibility for LAFCO to structure their operations and authorities to meet their local needs. To keep local control of the process, a LAFCO was created in every county. The diversity of counties means there is also a diversity of structures under which each LAFCO operates. Larger LAFCOs, like current LAFCO, are typically but not always run by independent agencies. The smaller counties often operate out of the county's planning department. Some are even combined to have multiple counties under one executive officer. There's also a variety of how LAFCOs operate. The city of San Francisco and the county of San Francisco have the exact same boundaries. So the city and the special districts covering San Francisco will not likely challenge their, change their boundaries anytime soon. So without that work to do, the LAFCO for San Francisco mostly writes municipal service reviews on how the city and special districts are operated. Many LAFCOs have five commissioners. Current LAFCO has nine. There's also four alternates. No LAFCO is larger. Down at the bottom of the slide talks about special seats. In about 2007 through 2009, there was a controversy over the boundaries between Shafter and Bakersfield. Bakersfield was not on the commission at the time. Instead, they were part of the regular rotation between cities that will happen next month as Commissioner Crump from Maricopa steps down and Commissioner Bruin from Ridgecrest is added. Wanting a seat at the table, the city of Bakersfield pushed through legislation to provide the largest city of the county a permanent seat. To keep the numbers at odd, at odd a ninth public member seat was added. So who does LAFCO reg, uh, regulate? It's one of the most frequent questions that I encounter. Another, another question is, uh, what is a special district? But that's for another presentation. Most on the do not include list are self-explanatory. I want to highlight JPAs and bridge and highway districts. Joint power agreements, coming referred to as JPAs, are not an agency that LAFCO forms, changes boundaries, gives them a sphere of influence, we do none of that. The LAFCO is the, is the depository of JPA contracts. When a Kern County based agency enters into a JPA, they are required to send a copy of that agreement to LAFCOs. Several LAFCOs have been collected over the years, but we are aware, several JPAs have been collected over the years, but are aware of others that have not, not supplied a copy. There is no penalty for not complying, so many don't. Secondly, bridge and highway districts. You might be aware there is a Greater Bakersfield separation, a grade district. It's the only district of its kind in the state. A bridge or highway district is different in that a separation of grade is different than a separation of grade district. Bridge and highway districts build and maintain bridges and roads. A separation of grade district, by comparison, only identifies crossings that may need a separation of grade. They then work with the local jurisdiction to find money to build, but the local agency builds and does the maintenance. So they are different. If separation of grade is a term that you're unfamiliar with, it's an overpass or underpass. What can LAFCOs do? This presentation is gonna be very basic for a moment as I go through the definitions of the actions and authorities LAFCO is granted. An annexation means the inclusion, attachment, or addition of a territory to a city or district. A, a detachment means the exclu exclusion, deletion, or removal from a city or district of any portion of the territory of that city or district. Incorporation means the creation or establish establishment of a city. Any area proposed for incorporation as a city shall have at least 500 registered voters residing within the affected territory at any time in the proposal, pr pr the proposal is initiated. Disincorporation means the dissolution, extinguishment, or termination of the existence of a city, 
and the cessation of its corporate powers, except for the purpose of winding up the affairs of the city. Formation means the creation of a district. Dilution means the disincorporation, extinguishment, or termination of, an ex of the existence of a district and the cessation of all of its corporate powers, except, for, except as the commission may otherwise provide uh, for the purpose of winding up the affairs of the district. Consolidation and merger, these two I get mixed up often. Consolidation means the uniting or joining of two or more cities located in the same county into a single new successor city or two or more districts into a single new successor district. A merger means the termination of the existence of a district when the responsibility of the functions, services, and assets and liabilities of that district are assumed by a city as a result of uh, proceedings taken pursuant to that division. Strangely, there is not an official definition of extension of services in CKH. An extension of service is typically considered when a proposed property needs a special service, but not the full array of services for a city or special district. There's also an extension of services for emergency purposes. This happens in cases where, for instance, a water well fails and there is no potable water to a property. LAFCO will approve an emergency hookup with an agreement that the service will end after a reasonable amount of time or the property will be annexed to the city or special district. A sphere of influence means a plan for the probable, probable, probable physical boundaries and services, service area of a local agency as determined by the commission. That's the official definition. Unofficially, a sphere of influence serves as a bit of a peacekeeper, especially between cities. It says, hey neighbor, we're planning to build out to this particular boundary. Don't think about going there. A service review or a municipal service review means an analysis conducted by the commission documenting and analyzing the services in a particular geographic region or jurisdictional area pursuant to requirements of section 56.430. Latent service or powers means those services, facilities, functions, or powers authorized by the principal act under which the district is formed, but that are not being exercised as determined by the commission pursuant to, to subdivision I of section 56.425. Colonel LAFCO does all of these actions listed in the slides except review fire contracts. And why doesn't LAFCO review fire contracts? Uh, because Kern is one of the few counties that does not have any fire districts. Back in the early 80s, all the fire districts in the county were dissolved and the authority to provide services was consolidated under Kern County Fire Department. Every five years or sooner, the commission reviews the sphere of influence of each city or municipal or special district. This is sometimes accomplished at the same time as a municipal service review for an agency. Municipal, municipal service reviews, often referred to as an MSR, takes a comprehensive look at the government agency to determine the capability of the agency to provide the services they wish to provide. And yes, staff is committed to working cooperatively with our member agencies and with the public at large. In this context, LAFCO has the ability to modify the boundaries of an agency. The services a special district can provide with the regulation of activity of active and inactive services. City services are always considered active whether the city provides a service or not. Some cases require a service to be extended outside the agency's boundaries without the need to do a full annexation or on an emergency basis as service is extended with a provision that there will be a later annexation. LAFCOs are prohibited from direct regulating land use. This is one of the few instances in code where LAFCO is especially prohibited from an, an authority. Land use regulation, for the most part, is regulated by the county, cities, and special districts through a general plan, zoning, conditional use permits, permits, and other means to decide what activities is appropriate in a specific part of that agency's jurisdiction. LAFCO doesn't have that authority. The commission has the ability to determine if necessary, if services can be adequately, adequately provided to a specific area. 
LAFCO staff often discuss sections of CKH during our presentations, but there are other sections of law that are equally important. The Brown Act, the Public Records Act, uh, all require LAFCO's actions to be accomplished in the light of day and provide the public the ability to participate. The California Environmental Quality Act attempts to quantify the environmental impacts of projects and possibly mitigate those impacts. One concept that is good to understand it is the responsibility of a lead agency as opposed to, to a responsible agency. There are often municipal agencies involved in reg regulating a project. Someone has to lead and others have to follow. The lead agency, as defined by CEQA, is the public agency, agency that that has a primary responsibility for carrying out or approving a project. A responsible agency under CEQA is a public agency with some discretionary authority over a project or a portion of it, but which has not been designated as a lead agency. Most of the projects before this LAFCO are initiated by another agency, which makes them the lead agency and LAFCO the responsible agency. Revenue and taxation code comes into play on nearly every action taken by LAFCO. Where tax dollars flow for services uh, to be provided are often negotiated between the county who collects local taxes and the agency providing the services. This is called a tax split agreement. Conflict of interest is a serious issue for the integrity of the commission. As commissioners, you are responsible to inform the commission if you have a conflict of interest for any proceeding before the commission. And principal acts are the section of law that authorizes agencies on how their agencies will be operated and the types of services that may be provided. When going through the agenda packet, you might notice there are several of our forms that look like they belong in a court of law. The reason is that, is that the actions of LAFCO are considered both quasi-legislative and quasi-judicial. Quasi-legislative means that each LAFCO can create their own standards. The majority of CKH says may rather than shall. These are two most powerful words in legislation. The use of the word may provides discretion, shall allows no discretion. Uh, Mr. Schroeder can point to some exceptions to this interpretation by the courts, but that's a road too long for today's purposes. Quasi-judicial means the decisions that this commission makes are held to the same standard and ruling of, from a judge. Because LAFCOs are quasi-judicial, the only place to appeal is in the courts. In light of recent court rulings, I would disagree with that your decision is upheld as long as the decision is not arbitrary or capricious. Arbitrary and capricious is a standard for judi judicial review and appeal often seen in administrative law. Under this standard, the findings of a lower court, or in this case LAFCO, will not be disturbed unless it has no re reasonable basis, or if the judge decides without reasonable grounds or adequate consideration of the circumstances. This slide says all the right things, act in accordance with the state law, and locally adopt policies, comply with CEQA, and adopt findings. What this slide doesn't tell you is that there's still a lot of gray area even when you, are, you meet all of these criteria. For instance, the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act, or SIGMA, is so new that the president has not been set or established. So there are still a lot of gray area in which we need to work. By far, the majority of proceedings that come through LAFCO are, inherited, are initiated by other agencies, counties, city, or special district. These are handled by a resolution rather than a petition which would be the appropriate avenue for anyone other than a public agency. Whenever an agency informs staff they are interested in initiating a, a proceeding, a meeting is immediately requested. The more uh, questions staff can answer, ask and answer, the fewer problems there will be down the road. Even with seasoned planners, there's often issues that they do not foresee at the beginning. There are over 100 points of information that must be gathered in the process. Any number of them can send a process in a different direction often in, uh, causing an increase in time and money. Mr. Rice could dominate this whole hour with just discussing the application process, and I'll try to pare it down. The key pieces of information needed are contained in the map, legal description, the resolution, the application, 
the CEQA document, and of course, there's an initial payment that comes when we, hit, when we receive an application. Once an application appears to be complete, there's an additional information that will be needed from the surveyor, which is maps and legal description, assessor, which uh, handles tax value, overlapping agencies, tax rate areas, property owners within the proposed area, and property owners within 200 feet. Elections, uh, they tell us who all the uh, registered voters are, and the CAO's office takes care of the tax exchange. After getting all this information back from the county, there is another determination of completeness. If complete and the public hearing is required, the notice has to be sent out at least 21 days prior to the hearing. Staff report and recommendation needs to be completed a week prior to the hearing when the commission receives their agenda packet. It might be a surprise to learn that there is considerable amount of work that happens post-hearing. The first three steps, reconsideration, protest hearing, and condition of approval are fairly common. Before documents are filed with the county recorder and board of equalization, there is a matter of final payment from the applicant for all of the external expenses. No pay, no reward, no record. If there isn't payment within a year, the proceeding is terminated regardless of the vote of the commission. I skipped through those really quick. Uh, LAFCO mis misconceptions. Mis the misconception most likely cited is that LAFCO is a county department. LAFCO, as configured locally, is a standalone agency authorized by the state. The most harmful mis uh, the misconception is that LAFCO is a rubber stamp for other local agencies. I hear that often. For those uh, who are familiar with local government operations, it will be of no surprise that CEQA, CEQA is a section of state law that most commonly draws litigation. Uh, commission needs to be aware of each of these topics as to not be placed in a position of vulnerability to litigation. And how do you avoid litigation? You don't cut corners. You provide sound evidence. You keep the public notified and ensure a hearing is fair. Sounds easy enough, easy enough, but the reality is that almost all information used to make findings are provided by either the applicant or the county. LAFCO generates very little raw information ourselves. Staff does our best to verify the information provided, but because there are cases where information is not accurate, LAFCO requires the applicant to sign an indemnification agreement holding LAFCO harmless if litigation is filed against commissioned by a third party. The independence of LAFCO is a value that I try to instill in all of our efforts. It is always good to be aware of the politics within the decisions that are made, but that said, really great work happens when there's a focus on sound policy. And it's also helpful for commissioners to think of the county as a whole instead of individual communities as your executive officer, this commission has provided me with a significant amount of trust to make everyday decisions and strong recommendations. It's a balancing act to both lead, yet not to overstep my authority. To continue the theme uh, of the previous slide, except for the two public members, everyone else on the commission represents a specific area of the county. While this is a rather large county, you're being asked to represent the public and the county as a whole. I'm behind again. Mm -hmm. Commissioner's role. I boil, boil that, this down to educate yourself, follow the law, provide leadership, and make Kern County a better place to live basically saying what it says up there just in different words. Kern County has our own office, personnel and equipment. The commission appoints the executive officer and the executive officer hires staff. Legal counsel works for the commission, not the executive officer. That said, please go through the EO if there is a legal matter that legal counsel must address. Legal costs are a significant way to have the budget get out of control. 
I need to know what's being charged. Uh, if you have a legal issue with me, then you should inform the chair if you, if you need to go to counsel. That way so a second person knows about it. I hope that never happens, but just so you're aware. Oh yes, LAFCO funding, you know, the one that the state didn't give us any money for. There are two components to yearly funding, fees and an assessment. Fees make up approximately 10% of the budget and are charged to the applicant for a base rate and external costs. These fees are less than the actual cost. If we relied on fees for, the, for a significantly bigger amount of the budget, there would, need, there would have to be a rather large reserve to account for the swings in number of applications we get from year to year. The other 90% comes from a yearly assessment, paid one third each by the county, cities, and special districts. This is calculated based on the budget approved by the commission plus unused sick and vacation pay, subtract out fees and the carryover from the previous year, and that is the allocated to a third of each. One duty I'm not required to accomplish is collecting the yearly assessment from cities and special districts. The county is responsible for collecting, meaning I don't have to spend a bunch of time chasing down agencies to get paid. That's very nice. This slide has some nice words that sound, light, sound nice, but here are my priorities. One, keep the commissioners happy. Two, make sure payroll is done. Make sure staff is happy. Comply with the law and keep commissioners in compliance with the law. This is a joint effort between myself and legal counsel. Four, make sure the tools are necessary to accomplish our objectives are available to us. Five, manage staff, agencies, media, and the public. Six, do the job, and seven, goes back to the beginning, keep the commissioners happy. The first bullet point here is an, is an emphasis for me. If commissioners know there will be a question for staff at a meeting, please give staff a heads up prior to the meeting. We want to provide you and all of the commission with answers needed to make a sound decision and inform the public. Current challenges, uh, municipal service reviews, we've talked about this in the past. Uh, we have a policy that's gone through the policy committee, uh, is yet to come to the full commission. I hope to get that to you sometime soon. Uh, there are agencies that are in trouble and either need help or need to go away. There are other agencies that maybe, maybe were viable at the beginning, but as the world has changed, are too small to provide an efficient service. Water is always a challenge. Sigma makes it more difficult and easier to address water shortages all at the same time. Uh, there is more data now because they are tracking more water usage than they ever have in the past. So it's easier to find that, that information. With that, thank you for listening patiently. If commissioners have any questions or comments, please feel free, feel free to ask. That's the end of my presentation.